Hello everyone, this is the start of a mini-series on a malware detection tool that I feel is often overlooked and undervalued. As defensive security professionals, we are often bombarded with marketing about the next great tool to eliminate the malware threat, and we've all seen how that is going. Poorly. Whether it's email threats like phishing or malicious attachments, or websites with malicious code injected into them, malware is everywhere and we're constantly being told to buy the next great product, usually with some fancy terminology in it to obscure the actual mechanics, to protect ourselves from these threats. But what if I told you there was a tool available, for free, that runs on pretty much every OS, both server and end user? What if this tool was simple enough that you could write your own rules for it, customized to your own environment, in addition to getting daily updates from the developer? Well. There is such a tool, supported by a major corporation, that does just that. Welcome to the world of ClamAV. ClamAV is an open source, GPLv2 licensed antivirus toolkit. And while it's marketed specifically at scanning email on mail gateways, the signatures are not entirely limited to email. Personally, I have used ClamAV on FTP servers, and web servers for years to scan file uploads and web files to ensure their safety. ClamAV has a vast array of signatures to detect over 8 million varieties of malicious content. It is able to scan a wide array of file formats ranging from plain text to archive files and binaries for Mac, Linux, and Windows, as well as disk images and it runs on a variety of Linux distributions as well as Mac OS and Windows. It's also available as a Docker image that can be deployed into your containerized environment. But that's not the real reason that ClamAV is a great addition to your defensive infrastructure. After all, it's an antivirus product, and you probably have several of those in your organization already, along with some intrusion detection or prevention systems, all tied together with a slick dashboard or three. No, the real reason that ClamAV is a great addition lays in how easy it is to extend its detection capabilities to suit your needs. This mini-series will step you through the process of updating your ClamAV install with new signatures specifically targeting the threats that you are facing. Like all antivirus tools, ClamAV relies primarily on text signatures to tell you the difference between good and bad files. These signatures come in different formats, but most consist of two different types. Hash signatures, where the entire file or part of a file is run through MD5, SHA-1, or SHA-256 to determine the, the checksum, which is then compared to the known bad hashes. And text string signatures, where the string is normalized in most cases, and then substrings are compared to the string signatures to determine if there are any matches. While those sound limited and potentially dangerous, since hashes can be duplicated and text strings can be changed, there is a surprising amount of power and safety in them. For instance, hash collisions, which have been demonstrated with ease for MD5, are almost eliminated in ClamAV because the hash signatures include the file size as part of the signature. Two files of the same size will not have the same MD5 hash unless they have the same content. On the other hand, text string signatures may seem limited until you understand that ClamAV allows for a number of powerful expressions to be incorporated in the signature to make it more flexible and there are multiple ways in which strings can be used to build signatures ranging from a single string to a wildcard expression to combinations of substrings to Yara rules. And while the full capabilities of Yara aren't supported, a significant enough subset are supported to make most Yara signatures usable by ClamAV. The signatures in ClamAV are separated into different database files for each type of signature. For instance, Hash signatures are placed in a file ending in .hdb for any hash, or .hsb for SHA-1 and SHA-256 backward compatibility. Meanwhile, basic text signatures are placed in a file ending in .ndb 
and logical text signatures are placed in a file ending in .ldb, while Yara signatures go in a .yar or .yara file. Additionally, there are certain signatures that can be created to tell ClamAV how to parse files. These are the file type magic signatures that determine whether ClamAV sees the file as a Windows binary, an image, or an HTML file. You can define your file type magic signatures to change ClamAV's behavior as well. And because these are all separate files, it is easy to run separate ClamAV instances with different databases for different purposes, or to add third-party signatures to your instance. Do you want to add more aggressive email signatures to your environment? Just start downloading the signatures from Sane Security or from Security Info. Do you want to have an instance that's more aggressive on Linux systems? Add in the signatures from the Linux malware detection project. Want to add your own? Well, that's what the videos in this series aim to teach you. We will get into all of these as the series progresses. If you're interested in following the series or to see when I put out other videos, hit the subscribe button. But for now, let's take a look at what ClamAV does to the files that it scans. The first thing that ClamAV does during a file scan is attempt to determine what kind of file it's looking at. This is done via the file type magic signatures and what you've set the configuration options to. If you've enabled scan archive, for instance, ClamAV will open the archive and scan the individual files within. If you've set max recursion to something more than one, then ClamAV will open nested archives as well. Similarly, for files that have well-defined structures like Olay files, which are Office docs, PDFs, and PE or ELF executables, ClamAV is able to parse those files into separate sections based on the file format. For example, if you've enabled ScanPE or ScanElf, ClamAV will parse the individual sections of those executables and scan each section. Additionally, ClamAV is able to scan the PE executables to see if their code signing certificates, assuming it's a signed binary, has been revoked. Without those options enabled, ClamAV will still scan the file, but without the file format parsing that's built into it, which means that some signatures might not match if the offsets don't work on the unprocessed file. For instance, if there's a signature that looks for malicious strings in the first 100 bytes of a PE section, and the file isn't detected as a PE file, that signature probably won't work. Additionally, ClamAV is able to parse document file formats such as Shockwave, PDF, and Microsoft Office Docs to scan the individual component files of those documents. Lastly, for ASCII files, both HTML and non-HTML, ClamAV will perform normalization, which is the process of minimizing whitespace and converting all the characters to lowercase in order to give them a consistent structure before scanning them. If you have scan HTML enabled as an option, ClamAV will perform additional processing to both normalize the file by stripping comment tags and as well as the case conversion and whitespace reduction, as well as normalize and strip all HTML tags into another file and attempt to extract and normalize any JavaScript into a third file. These normalized files will also get scanned using the signatures, which means that a signature can almost completely ignore differences in whitespace in order to detect malicious content. However, this can cause issues if the malicious content is encoded using whitespace. You can check out my video on that above. And for all artifacts that ClamAV scans, whether we're talking about the original file, something that gets extracted from the original file, such as a PE section, or a temp file that gets created, such as a normalized file, ClamAV will scan those with hash signatures and report matches. Now that we know how ClamAV functions, we'll dive into the different signatures in the next videos and show you how you can create your own signatures from previously undetected files that you find, as well as from websites that publish indicators of compromise and other free data sources. Thanks for watching. Hit the like button if you found it interesting or helpful. Press subscribe if you want to be notified when a new video goes live. And leave a comment if you have a question or feedback. See you next time.